That concludes questions for answer. I call on Government Order of the Day. Debate on the Prime Minister's statement. Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Mr Speaker, I rise to support the motion moved by the Prime Minister yesterday and to defeat the motion or the amendment to that motion moved by the Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Speaker, if there is anything that typifies the way in which this election year has started, it would have to be the ill-named uh, start that the uh, opposition leader put to his uh, programme last week. It has been a bad start. And if we are to see this year progress on the same sort of basis, Mr Speaker, then I think by the time we get the election, we will see David Cunliffe dressed in a plaid jacket with white shoes and sunglasses going around peddling his policies to New Zealanders. Because the one thing that they've learnt this week is that when it comes to this guy, whether it's his CV or a policy, it pays to read the fine print. It pays to understand all of the nuances that are in it, because it, it apparently, it, whether it's policy or a CV, is a living document. Mr Speaker, the other extraordinary thing that we've come to learn this week is that you don't have to have money to spend it or save it. And this is going to come as a huge revelation to so many New Zealanders who go out every day to work, uh, to earn a little bit more, to hopefully get into a, a better tax bracket when they get a government that respects what they do and what their contribution to the community is, uh, that they in fact don't have to do that. They can simply go around anywhere observing something that they would like, not acquiring it, and then assuming that that's a saving that they can go off and spend somewhere else. And I talk, of course, about the $1.5 billion that David Cunliffe has now said he has available to him and his caucus for policy initiatives. Well, sir, the other thing that sits behind that is the suggestion that tax and taxation is an amount that sits there and you decide, sir, how much of it you require. Well, that's not how it works. Taxation is money that comes directly out of the pockets of working New Zealanders. And whenever he says that we gave away tax cuts, he's trying to say, in fact, that his party felt they had some entitlement to have their hand deep inside the pockets of New Zealanders who work hard every day, every week, every year to try and get ahead. That, sir, won't wash. Who sooner or later, he and his colleagues are going to have to come out and tell New Zealanders, beyond the head shaking that they did today in confirming this, how much extra tax they're going to require of them. How much extra borrowing is going to be done on their behalf and how much turning a blind eye to New Zealand's current debt picture is going to go on under any regime that might be led by Labor. Mr Speaker, the contrast yesterday was between a Prime Minister outlining, outlining the programme that the Government has embarked on, outlining the work that the Government is doing and outlining the intentions that the Government has for the betterment of all New Zealanders in the year ahead, noting that we have an election where there will be other policies put in front of New Zealanders to consider. That against a Leader of the Opposition who spent his time making, uh, I suppose, a semi-coherent attempt to bring together every lefty cliché that you could possibly imagine, sir, and also Putin. making Putin. what you might describe as second-rate comical uh, contributions along the way. Very, very little, if any, content about what his proposals for New Zealand's future might be. Simply a list of what he sees as being wrong in his very jaundiced eyes. Mr Speaker, New Zealanders are aspirational people. They will not be moved, in my opinion, by those who simply want to be negative all the time and talk down the good things that are happening in their lives. And that, sir, I think will become very, very evident as the uh, uh, year progresses. I want to make a couple of comments about the government's commitment to Christchurch, which I have considerable involvement with. Uh, well supported by every minister in the cabinet uh, and well supported by every member of the caucus. Mr Speaker, people seem to forget how big that disaster was. 
And when we announced today more than 50,000 houses repaired since uh, those disasters began, uh, and you consider that that is the equivalent of every house in Napier and Hastings having a substantial repair done to it, it gives a little bit of context about what we're dealing with. And that, sir, is only two-thirds of the task that is in front of the Fletcher office at the present time, the EQC run managed repair. In addition to that, there are another 30-odd thousand homes where private insurers are currently engaged in getting progress for those people. And there will be MPs who come out along with people who say they're being ill-treated or mistreated or whatever. All I can say to them is, I have repeatedly said since uh, September, bring those cases to us and we'll look at them. Mr Speaker, I want to put on record today that I have had no Member of Parliament bring a single case to my office where there is an allegation of mistreatment by an insurer or by EQC. Quite an extraordinary thing. I've had lots of letters to me personally and they have all been dealt with uh, as they have arrived. Mr Speaker, the point though is that Christchurch is a very, very good example of the resilience that New Zealanders instinctively call upon. And over the last five years, while the Labour uh, Party has been in denial of the difficulty of our economic circumstances, New Zealanders have got on with making things better for themselves alongside a government who have supported them through it. And it's extraordinary that having spent all those years in opposition saying there is no economic problem, that they are now out there claiming that the problem is gone and that they can start spending the gains that come from better management of the economy. Mr Speaker, people will not be fooled by that. Can I make a couple of comments too about some of the investment that National has made in our economy? Any economy is driven by the quality of its infrastructure. We have those commitments in broadband, we have those commitments in education, we have those commitments uh, in the transport sector as well. And I can report, Mr Speaker, that the biggest project in New Zealand's history, the Western Ring Route in Auckland, is underway, it is on target and it is tracking to budget. Mr Speaker, the Tauranga Eastern Link is underway, it's under construction, it is on target and it is below projected budget. Mr Speaker, the, uh, uh, Western, the Waikato Expressway continues to be developed. Uh, it is uh, a work in progress. Everyone can see it when they go up and down that road, and it is also tracking below budget. Mr Speaker, the Christchurch motorways, two big projects there. Uh, one is completed, the other is starting, and it is also tracking on its original budget path. Further, we have the Wellington Northern Corridor, uh, which is uh, a, a road that's been uh, promised for a very, very long time, also looking as if it will start sometime toward the end of this year. Mr Speaker, governments are elected because of the way in which they connect with people. And I'd remind our colleagues across the other side of the House, one of their great leaders, Norman Kirk, once said that there are five great rights that people expect from a government. The right to be well housed, the right to have good education, the right to be healthy, the right to have a job and the right to feel secure in their homes. On every one of those points, our record outstrips them and their past history by a very long shot. Mr Speaker, I strongly support the Prime Minister's motion. Speaker. Honourable